Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are going to look at the case of Lisa Borch, who murdered her mother for terrorism. Born in 1999, Lisa Borch lived in the small village of Kevisel, a village of Friedrichshaven municipality, the most northern municipality in Denmark. She had a twin sister and younger brother, lived with her mother who was 24 years old when she gave birth to Borch, Tine Rome Holtegaard, who was a painter, and her stepfather, Jens Holtegaard in 2014. Borch's mother and stepfather had been together for 11 years. At the age of 15, in 2014, Borch began dating an Islamic extremist who ended up returning to his family in Sweden. The unnamed man was married and had children. However, despite the breakup, Borch remained obsessed with Islamic extremism. Following this, Borch met 28-year-old Bakatir Mohammed Abdullah, an Iraqi who was in a nearby refugee camp, with Borch meeting Abdullah nearby the refugee camp. Her stepfather noted that she was enthusiastic about migrants, and most disturbingly, the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, officially known as the Islamic State. ISIS is an anti-American, anti-West, radical Sunni Islamic terrorist group promoting religious violence and adhering to a global jihadist principle following a hardline ideology of Al-Qaeda. Jihadism is a 21st century ideology to describe the Islamist movements perceived as military movements rooted in Islam and existentially threatening to the West. It was adopted by Western journalists following the September 11 attacks. On the 11th of September 2001, four passenger aircraft were hijacked, two were flown into the World Trade Center, which collapsed, one was flown into the Pentagon, and a fourth plane, United 93, which was intended to be flown into the Pentagon, crashed into Stony Creek Township after its passengers overcame the hijackers. An estimated 2,977 people were killed, with 19 terrorists killed, who were acting under Al-Qaeda, controlled by Osama bin Laden, which ruled Afghanistan at the time. A further 25,000 people were injured. In 2014 and 2015, ISIS was at the zenith of its power, having driven Iraqi government forces out of key cities in western Iraq, as well as capturing Mosul. It frequently posted videos of beheadings and other types of executions of soldiers and civilians onto the internet. This included journalists and aid workers. Borch watched these videos frequently. This included the execution of British aid humanitarian workers David Haynes, who worked for ACTED, who was beheaded by ISIS on the 13th of September 2014 and Alan Henning, who was beheaded by ISIS on the 3rd of October 2014. Her mother, Time Rome Holtegaard, pictured to the left, and stepfather attempted to stop Borch from seeing Abdullah, and she argued frequently with them for many months, to the degree that her twin sister had to move out. Borch showed a knife to her sister and claimed that she would murder her mother with it, but the threat was not taken seriously. On the 8th of October 2014, Timmer Rome Holtegaard took sleeping pills and went to sleep. She was stabbed 20 times by her 16-year-old daughter and boyfriend, killing her. Borch contacted police and claimed that her mother had screamed and that she had seen a white man running from the home. She told police, I heard my mother scream and I looked out the window and saw a white man running away. Please come here, there is blood everywhere. When police arrived, Borch was indifferent, sitting on a chair in the living room, playing with her iPhone and watching YouTube videos on her computer. When police asked where her mother was, she refused to leave her computer and pointed upstairs. When informed that her mother was indeed dead, she simply shrugged. Abdullah was not present when the police arrived, but was arrested on the strength of forensic evidence with the two lovers going to trial in Kajoring, the main city and administrative seat of the Kajoring municipality in the Norgeiland region in Denmark. Prosecutors claimed that the pair murdered Taime Rome Holtegaard, with both of them planning to flee to Syria to fight in the Syrian civil war. 
The court found them both guilty but was unable to determine which one carried out the stabbing. During the trial, Borge changed her story and told the court that she was scared of Abdullah and only confessed to the crime and she was scared of him. Both blamed each other for the killing. Speaking to tabloid newspaper Extra Blooded, Jens Holtegaard noted that jihadism was not the motive for the murder of his wife and that Borch had been attracted to bikers or any other extreme and reiterated his fear that she would become radicalised in prison. He also said that he does not blame Islam and blames ISIS for the murder of his wife. With Borch a minor when the crime took place and still a juvenile while the sentencing was handed down in September 2015, Borch was sentenced to spend nine years in prison, of which one would be set bent in a juvenile detention and the remaining eight years in prison. The Danish High Court upheld the ruling on the 28th of January 2016 following an appeal by Borch. The appeal reiterated that the murder was Abdullah's idea. This was one of the longest sentences handed to a juvenile in the history of Denmark. Borch's twin sister and father attended the trial to see her sentenced, but her twin sister did not look at her during her trial. Abdullah was sentenced to 13 years in prison, which is to be followed by mandatory deportation to his native Iraq. The pair were ordered to pay approximately 57,600 euros in compensation to Borch's stepfather, her twin sister and her younger brother. Borch was judged by psychologists to be a psychopath. Holligard disagreed and told Danish tabloid newspaper BD that his stepdaughter, despite murdering his wife, was not a psychopath and had claimed that she was radicalised by Abdullah, believing that she would be further radicalised while in prison. Speaking to Danish TV Guide, a celebrity journalist magazine which also publishes versions in Norway and Sweden, in September 2015, Holtegaard said that he was as fragile as a Chinese porcelain doll following the murder of his wife, slept up to 14 hours a day and was prescribed anti-anxiety medication. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favour and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.